Happy New Year, everyone. I hope that 2022 will be a wonderful year for you all. Thank you all for coming. We have a very good lineup for you this evening. i sure that you will enjoy the activities. But as we move into 2022, I just want to take the time to thank all of my subscribers. You all have been great. You have supported us. We are here now. Um, we are ready to do more to make sure that the information is ready and waiting for you all. Um, I want to take the time to thank those who participated on the show last year. I don't want to call the name and miss anyone, but we have from the Davian Clark, the Juliet um, Cuthbert, we had Tyson Gay, Justin Gatlin, we had um, Akeem Bloomfield, we had Sean Grant, Leighton Levy, uh, we have um, Akeem Bloomfield, if I didn't say that, young Christopher Taylor, and Raymond Stewart, without a doubt. So we just want to take the time to say thank you all for participating. And as we move forward into 2022, I am confident that we will continue to do more. Today, I sent out uh, an inter, uh, a video and I was talking a little bit about my experience as uh, going into retirement. And I'm sure that a lot of the athletes today, they go through that process where they feel so much alone. And I just wanted to put that out, not with the aim of causing any problem with anyone, but for, for, for the athletes to understand that sometimes as you move from one point to the next, you will come in contact with things that you may not like the experience, but if you stay focused with time, we can all achieve. And that's what I was trying to say, because with time, I was able to do a lot for myself and my family and my friends. But today it's about Sharon Simpson, a young lady who performed well for Jamaica over the years. She is backstage and I am going to get the time to know her. And I want you to take the time this evening to know her as well. I prepared an interview, uh, an introduction as usual. So we're going to go into the, inter the, the introduction. Then we're going to bring Sharon Simpson on stage. Let's go. Sharon Simpson, a loving mother, a caring daughter, a loyal friend and a champion. With hard work, dedication and sacrifice, Sharon was determined to achieve her athletic success at the highest level. In 2004, Sharon was a member of the quartet who had won the gold medal in the 4x100 meter in the Athens Olympics. In 2008, Sharon also won her first individual Olympic silver medal after tying for second place in the 100 meter with teammate Caron Stewart in a photo finish. Again in 2006, Simpson won the gold medal in the Commonwealth Games Championship, defeating the then Olympic champion Veronica Campbell. Also again in 2006, Sharon convincingly won the Continental Championship, defeating America's Tory Edwards and the African champion Vilda Anin from Ghana. In 2015, Sharon also had the Pan American Games Championship crown to her accolade by defeating the American Barbara Pierre. A few weeks later, Simpson also won the gold medal in the 4x100 meter for Jamaica at the 2015 World Championship in Beijing, China. Without a doubt, Sharon has proven to the world 
that one should strive endlessly to achieve their highest potential at all cost. Her belief is that one should never give up when faced with challenges. Instead, one should stay focused and committed while moving forward in both the good and the bad times. So without any further delay, and with great honor and respect, I welcome one of Jamaica's exceptional female sprinter in track and field. Put your hands together and help me welcome to the stage Sharon Simpson. Sharon. Sharon Simpson, Happy New Year to you and your family. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. <laughs> Long overdue, I am happy that you took the invitation to be a part of Let's Talk with Dr. Greg. How is the New Year treating you? I'm, I have to give thanks. I am alive and... You know, we, once we have life, we have everything. So I'm happy to be here with you. And thank you for, for that awesome introduction. <laughs> uh, well, I don't want to take all the credit. You know, everything I do, my team plays a major role to make this happen. So I, I'm going to take that and I'm going to give everything over to them. But thank you very much. Okay, to you and your team. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, before we get into the interview, Sharon, it's a custom on this platform that before the actual interview starts, our guests get a chance to shout out whomever they please, or they may promote anyone, any venture they may have. Is there anyone you would like to acknowledge before the actual interview? <laughs> Lord Jesus. You know, so many people to acknowledge, but I just say for all my fans out there, thank you for all the support, you know, as an athlete and now retired, you know, just look out for, you know, a lot more things from me. You can find me on social media. So I'm still here and striving to, to be better, you know, every day to be the best Sharon Simpson. Mm. And in truth, that is how it ought to be. Um, for all the people who are on this platform now watching this interview, and for those who will be watching the interview later, tell us, Sharon, what parish in Jamaica are you from, and did you grow up here? I am from the beautiful parish of Manchester. Yes, I grew up in Devon, you know, a small district, you know, pretty close to Christiana. So I am from Manchester. Well, uh, most of us who are not from Manchester may not know what it is like, but you can tell us what was life like for a young girl like yourself growing up well, in Manchester? I must say that I really enjoyed life. I've learned so much growing up in the country, and I do think that my upbringing really helped me to be the woman I am today, the lady I am. And, you know, I have to give credit to my grandparents, my maternal grandparents. I grew up with them. My mommy migrated to the Bahamas, you know, for a better life for us. Daddy was still there. But I must say that I enjoyed my childhood. And I, I love going back to visit, especially during the Christmas holidays. So, um, you know, Manchester, pretty cool. You know, you always have to have your jacket. But I must say, I enjoyed every bit of my childhood in Devon. <laughs> and that is good to know. Um, most of us don't know a whole lot. And I want everybody to get the chance to know everything that they can about Sharon today. Who and what would you say was your inspiration that influenced you to start running track? You know what? Definitely my mother. She has always been a strong support system for me in everything and you know until today she is my everything she you know i mean leanna now is in the picture but i must say that my mother has been there for me from i can say day one mm -hmm. and 
he has always been, as I said before, my backbone. And I give all credit to her for everything that she has done for me and continuing to do for me. <laughs> you know, I have always said that parental involvement is one of the most important thing um, in a child's life because you're able to share some of your success in the moment. And sometimes you're so much afraid when you're young, uh, you want that motherly or fatherly figure next to you to encourage you and to support you. But did you compete at the primary or the prep school level? And if so, were you, were you a, a, a superstar at that oh, early age? Oh, yes, I did. I attended the Christian Elise Primary School, and I can remember competing at sports day at the home technical grounds that is where we would have our sports day and you know persons would see me running at that sports day and i can remember being recruited to represent my parish manchester where we would go to the stadium then it was the blue cross championships so it all started for me at the christian elise primary school and from then i you know enjoyed competing and from there i think it helped me to to achieve all that i've achieved in track and field mm, so so i guess you you wanted to stay in um manchester what high school did you actually attend did oh. you come to kingston then or did you stay in manchester no i did not the manchester <laughs> high school yes i spent my high school days at manchester high school and i must say also that I'm very happy that I was given the chance to to uh, attend uh, Manchester High School. I did not pass my common entrance for Manchester High School. I, I passed for Knox College, but I, I wanted to go to Manchester High School because of its rich, rich history in track and field and also its academic prowess. So I really am very happy that I was fortunate to attend the Manchester High School. Uh, you know, Manchester had some great athletes back in the days, you know. Um, yeah, so it's, a, it's, a, it's a good selection. Mm -hmm. Enlighten us. How well did you perform at Manchester? You know, I think I did pretty well. I got some medals. And I think from my second year of class four, I always, I've always gotten a medal at the Boys and Girls Championship. So I must say that my time representing Manchester High School at the championships were very good. Hmm. Did you earn a scholarship to attend university overseas or did you decide to attend college in Jamaica? Yes, I can remember the first scholarship I got was to UTEP and you know, I remember the coach, he came to Jamaica and we spoke and also, I must give credit to, you know, may his always in peace. Fuller, he was very instrumental in me, you know, doing well at Manchester High School, and he also helped, you know, get in, get in scholarship. But I must say that, <laughs> you know, I just love Jamaica and it's <laughs> weather. So I, you know, as as you know, the saying is, you you cannot put all your eggs in one basket. So I went ahead and I did my SAT. I was successful. But, you know, in the end, I chose to stay in Jamaica and to attend the University of Technology. <laughs> well, you know, I, I, I have a friend now who is one of the coach at UTEP. Um, you know, so I guess he can relate to, to you <laughs> staying in Jamaica. But one other thing I find, Sharon, in based on even my own experience, that sacrifice is a hard discipline to maintain, but it is one of the main ingredients in people's success. I know it must have been hard, the road must have been hard for you. So I want you to tell us, what was the experience like traveling back and forth from Manchester to Kingston to attend college while balancing your studies and maintaining that level of competitiveness that you wanted to have? You know what, fortunately, I did not have to travel. I lived in Kingston at first. I. Mm -hmm. For the first two months, I stayed off campus, and I can remember 
Coach Francis would come and pick me up every morning at 4.30. <laughs> and to take me to training, I would have to take my uniform because, you know, I did food service management. So we had to wear black and white. And he would come and pick me up at 4.30 every morning. And then eventually I got on campus to stay on dorm. So I must say that, you know, I was fortunate to be able to, to stay on campus at the University of Technology while mm. at school. Mm. Well, I oftentimes say that if I had a school in Miami and I was so close to Jamaica, I think I would be hopping on a plane every other week if I could afford it. But speaking of moving back and forth, I have interviewed a lot of athletes and most of them seem to say that the transition from high school is one of the most gruesome thing for an athlete to experience. How was your transition from high school to college? Please give us as much detail as possible. You know, my transition was very good. I have to give thanks. I knew what I wanted. I knew that I wanted to have a very good start to my career in track and field and also mm -hmm. to do well in school. So I must say I had all intentions of going to the University of Technology to do well in both track and field and academics. Mm. And, you know, that is that was my focus to ensure that I am a training every day and just to ensure that I am also, you know, attending my classes because I knew that at the end of the day, after those four years, I will be graduating with a degree. And that is what I did. And I must say that it's all about being staying focused and, and being determined and knowing exactly what you want. And then you just work hard towards it. In terms of the transition, would you say that the support that you received from your team made it easier for you? Or were you just that disciplined where you just and had the support of, say, family members that made the transition easier for you? Yes, I was very disciplined. But at the same time, I had a very good support system. And I must say that the staff at the University of Technology and especially Coach Stephen Francis, he ensured that I was comfortable and I was able to transition well. Mm -hmm. It was, as I said, it was not hard. And with their support at the University of Technology, it really made it easy. You know, I, 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 I must say, because you, you, you talk about Francis, but Stephen Francis, Coach Francis, and I must really give him a lot of credit because... If you notice, he has played a major role in the development of the track and field in Jamaica. So because you mentioned him multiple times, I just want to support you on that to say, look, I too um, appreciate what he has done because it is his work that helped to develop you into the person you are today. I, for one, though, Sharon, know your greatness and how you mature through the different levels of track and field. But for the people who are not aware, in your own words, let them know, how much did you excel at the collegiate level? I represented UTEC for three of my four years there. And I'm, I'm happy to say and proud that I gave my all in representing the University of Technology because they gave me a scholarship. And I knew that, you know, I, my talent also helped, but I knew that with my talent and with their help of giving me a scholarship, I was able to get a tertiary education. And, you know, I'm not from a rich family, so getting that scholarship really helped. And it 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 was it was very good representing the university of technology and in every competition that i did for utec i gave it my all and you know i got a lot of wins yes and i must say that i really enjoyed my years at the university of technology and also representing them in you know all aspects of mm -hmm. my Ah, I hope we're not having any technical difficulties. But if we do have any technical difficulties at this time, we will just kind of wait until we get some internet access once again. 
Uh, we have been having some technical difficulties, but um, I hope you guys are all enjoying the interview. I have some questions that I can't wait to ask. Um, we're going to hear about her MVP experience. We're going to hear about um, some of the competitive nature with Shelly and Fraser. Um, I, I'm not sure if, if, okay, well, she does give her a second or two. She should log back in, but believe me, we are not even halfway in this interview. We're going to talk about some of the competitive nature with Sharon and Shelly Ann. We're going to talk about, um, the genius Stephen Francis in terms of wheeling his magic. So just give her a few minutes to log in. For this time being, if you have any questions that you want to ask, you can go ahead and post your questions. I will try my best to write them down so we have them to ask her when she is back. Don't be afraid. I want you all to know as much as you can about Sharon. Nice person, very talented, very disciplined, very committed. So... If you have any question at all that you think um, Sharon may need to answer, then don't be afraid and share it with us. Now, um, one other thing, uh, well, I don't want to give out all of the questions that I'm going to ask Sharon at the moment, but you ever wonder why Stephen Francis was so great? I've always asked the question, is it all about talent? Or is he able to take an ordinary person and wheel his magic and get the most out of them? Because what we see now, and you will hear Sharon tells you, that during her time, she thought she was an average athlete. But look what the outcome is. She is an Olympian, Olympic gold medalist, and so on and so forth. So she is back. We're going to put her back on the screen. Another problem. <laughs> um, everyone is waiting to hear. So, you know, you don't need to worry. We have the time to take. Um, I'm going to jump into the next question because I want to know, and I'm sure the viewers want to know, that after you finished college, you made the decision to sign with MVP with coach Stephen, Stephen Francis. What drove you to join that specific club when there were so many other clubs that you could choose from well i did not have to sign anything but i was already training with utec and at that time he was the coach so it was an easy transition to go into the mvp track club and I am happy I made that decision. I have achieved so much while at the MVP track club and deciding to stay in Jamaica and go to college and then to transition to the MVP track club. That was a very good decision on my part. Well, without a doubt, the evidence speak for itself because you made the decision and you reap a whole lot of the benefits. Here is what I am sure others are thinking, and I'm thinking this too, because almost all the athletes who come on this platform, we ask them this question, this question because we know it is something that will determine how great the person becomes in, when they move to that level. But the truth be told, your move from the collegiate level to the professional level and I can tell you, it is one of the most pivotal points in any athlete's career. How was your transition moving from collegiate into the pros? And what are some of the challenges you face making that transition? The big difference with colleges in Jamaica and the ones overseas is that I can say I was training like that of a professional while attending the University of Technology. So therefore the transition after my four years at UTEC was pretty easy because I knew I, I would still be in the, doing the same program and is, you know, I was not training for indoors and then, you know, how I was 
competing. So I was not really competing like that of a collegiate athlete. I was training like that of a professional and also competing like that also of a pro professional. So the transition I must say was pretty easy because of the training I was doing while attending UTIC. And that is one of the pro, so in my opinion, with the UTEC students, that they practice make perfect and they are doing these things over and over and it becomes a part of them. It is said though, Sharon, that, well, I am one of them who believe that Stephen Francis is a genius based on the results that he gets from his athletes. You have been with the club before the big name female like Shelley and Fraser Price and Elaine Thompson era. Based on your experience, what was it like having Stephen Francis as a coach early in your professional years? You know, I have to give thanks that I had Coach Francis as a coach that early in my career. And, you know, all that I've achieved really speak for itself. And all that he is capable of getting an athlete to achieve. I'm very grateful for all that I have accomplished while training with the MVP track club. Coach Francis is an awesome coach. He loves to read. And with, with all the reading that he does, it shows in his training and how his athletes compete and achieve so well. So having him as a coach, not saying that every day it was all good. <laughs> most of the times, I must say that I really enjoyed my time training most of the times there at MVP because I knew that he was very knowledgeable. He really knows the sport well. And also, you know, once I'm able to just do the program, I'm able to just follow his instructions, I know that I would be able to accomplish all the goals that I set out to achieve. Mm -hmm. Well, I personally like the fact that you are giving him total credit for what he has done because sometimes on the outside, people make decisions and they don't have a whole lot of information. And I'm not saying that the man is perfect, but it's very weird that you find an, a past athlete would come on and speak so highly of someone who has been great to them in terms of their development, because I'm sure it was not only the physical development, but also the mental development. Because he said, it: if you get too comfortable, Sharon, it's not that I have something personal against you, but I am going to push you to the limit. Could you give us? a bird's eye view into how he would push you to the limit to get you to, to say, you know what, I don't want to come back, but I love what he is doing. Listen, I, I, as you said, he's someone that pushes you to the limit. And because of his character and the way how he coaches, it really helped me because I like to be pushed because sometimes I can be lackadaisical. And with him... Because you realize with Coach Stephen Francis, he he does not gravitate to the superstars of the Boys and Girls Championships. He knows talent. And once he's, he sees talent and he gets you into his camp, he's going to work hard and pushes you to achieve the highest and to be your best. And that is what he does at times yes you may not want to do it but you know at the end of the day once you're able to finish those programs and you're able to just, just you're able to just listen to him you will achieve the highest and i must say that is what most of his athletes do once you're able to listen to him and just to work hard you will achieve because he will put I mean, don't let the his exterior, you know, the outside. He is a very, very nice person, someone who you can talk to, you know, most of the times. 
So it's very important that you can, you know, go to him at times and to tell him, you know, things that, you know, bothering you or, you know, just to, to, to help him to guide you in, you know, in your career. So, you know, it's very important to have a knowledgeable coach and someone at times you can talk to. Well, and that makes sense. And I can tell you that a lot of athletes today struggle to find a knowledgeable coach, struggle to find a coach within a system, with a team. Uh, so that within itself is a blessing in disguise. But I want to go into your mind a little bit deeper because without a doubt, you were one of the first female athletes for MVP that one could say successful. I'm talking about sprinters, 100, 200 meter. Um, tell us, what kept you so motivated being at the top in that club? Because people see the MVP club now and they think that it was always like that. But what was it like for you when it wasn't as big as it was or is now? How did you see yourself fitting in? Was it a struggle? Was it something that you wanted more out of it? Could you explain that for us? I knew I always wanted to be an Olympian and to get a medal at the Olympics. Hmm. And every day I went out in training and, you know, I must say it was not... At times, it was not it was not easy to balance training and you know going to school, but I knew what I wanted and I worked hard every day towards my goals. And as I said before, having a very good system at UTEC it really helped. And being in a camp where you know before you had Bridget Foster, you know before she. Yes. Uh, she's Bridget Foster Hilton yeah. so she was there training you had a supper you had so many athletes who have accomplished a lot and that really motivated me and to 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 attend the University of Technology and you know coach Stephen Francis is someone who he's going to tell you the truth <laughs> but you like it or not and it's up to you to take what he says to you and just to, to, to work with it. And, you know, that is what I did. Not all the time I wanted to do the program. And at times, you know, I would question the program. But when I do it, I realize that, listen, I am getting better. So it's just for me to just trust the process and to trust all the programs that Coach Francis would give to me. And, and, and that do make a lot of sense. And again, I, I'm happy that you're able to shed some light because a lot of people don't know Stephen Francis up front, close and personal. But no, we're not reading anything from a book. We're getting a lived experience of somebody who interacted with the man for over a decade. So I, I appreciate your honesty, um, Sharon. There are positives and negatives when you have more than one champion in a club. I want you to tell us, what was it like to have trained with teammate Shelley and Fraser Price? And how much more did that reality drove you to want to become the better version of yourself? Let me tell you, it's like every day I train is a competition because we, we all have to train together. We all do the same program. So we have to go out there and we all want to get the time that coach sets out for us. So we're going out there and we're pushing each other. And that is what is really good when you're in a, a big club and you know your goals and you're a hard worker because you know that every day it feels like competition. So when you go out and actually be competing with others, you have that feeling because you have been training with persons who have achieved a lot, who are very good. And, you know, you know that once you're able to train well with them, you're able to, to be close with them. You're, you're able to finish the program and to see where you are with, I mean, your teammates, but also your competitors. It really helps you when you go out to compete with other athletes. So, you know, Yes, you have to have that tunnel vision and you have to to focus on yourself. But at the same time, you are you are training with your teammates 
who is i mean a superstar who who has accomplished a lot so yes you'll be keeping an eye also on your teammate your competitor but at the end of the day it really helped with how you're able to compete in training and also when you go out to compete with other athletes well you know what that is telling me that your mind was in the right place because i found that a lot of athletes are afraid to trade with a name brand athlete because they feel like they don't want to be embarrassed so it goes to show that you had the mind of a champion it didn't matter who it was you were gonna give the best of yourself and i like that um without a doubt sharon over the years you have proven to be a great athlete the results speak for itself um we all saw it even if we were haters and the, and you weren't one of the person we wanted to win because we see that happen all the time but one thing i find that it doesn't matter how great of an athlete you are you will have to face some setbacks what types of setbacks did you experience and how did you deal with them on the road to becoming an olympic champion Injuries for me was uh, very rough. You know, finishing the season 2006 as the world number one in both the 100 meters and the 200 meters. And then right after that season, I had my first knee surgery on my left knee. So I was out for the entire 2007 season and I had to watch the world championships from the hotel room in Berlin, I think. I hope I got that right. Yes, so it was very hard. So I had to work extremely hard to get back for 2008. Listen, and just, um, you know, seeing how Shelly and performed in 2007, you know, my teammate. And, you know, I did so well in 2006, was not able to compete for the entire 2007 season. Oh, listen, I gave it everything I had in 2008 just to get back to be able to 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 be able to run in 2008 and knowing that it was it was an olympic year so it was very very hard but i you know i stood the task and i knew what i wanted you know i, I wrote down my goals you know and you know i talked to myself about it i had as i said i had it all written down i knew what i wanted but let me tell you, injury is very hard. And then after accomplishing that goal for 2008, getting that medal, right after again, I had to do another knee surgery on the same knee. Lord Jesus, it was hard. It was hard. And Lord, listen, it was trying. <laughs> and, you, know, you know, at times I wanted to give up, but I said, no, I was not going to give up. I wanted to fight more. And, you know, I came back and I was able to, to win in 2015 in, in, in Canada, which I think was the biggest, the biggest accomplishment for me, not even that silver medal I got at the Olympics because so much that I've been through to be able to come back in 2015 and to get that medal at the Pan Am Games injuries, it was very hard. But guess what? You know, as athletes, you know, a lot of athletes are fortunate to be able not to get any injuries and not to be able to do any surgeries because it was hard mm -hmm. i can remember after i did my second surgery in 2008 after i won that medal in 2015 in canada the doctor called me and he said he did not want to say it to me then but after doing that surgery he really thought that that would have been the end of my career and to see me you know to fight back and to be able to get that medal in 2015 you know i get a little bit emotional <laughs> but let me tell you something it was a lot of fight and i just did not give up i knew what i wanted and i just stuck to it <laughs> hey we are going to get to 2015 because you did not know i work with a lot of at least behind the scene and Barbara Prier was one of the athletes that I was working with, you know. And I work with you too, and I'm like, oh man, I, these two ladies I appreciate so much. And, you know, it, I was happy. It was a moment where 
I personally knew your struggle in the moment. And because of that, I empathize. But we're going to get there. We're going to, <laughs> we're going to get there. And look here, when you're talking with Dr. Greg, you can get as emotional as you want because it's a good way to express yourself because sometimes as athletes, we really don't get the chance to fully express our feelings. I want you to express yourself on this other question. No, because I'm taking you back a little bit. 2004, you won your first Olympic gold medal as a member of the 4 by one team for Jamaica. In your own words, can you describe that feeling? And were there any changes in your life after that win? Definitely. Remember, I was the youngest finalist in the in the 100 meter final in 2004. So that was a big accomplishment. I was not yet 20 years old. Mm. And listen, just making the finals, my first Olympics, oh Lord, I was so happy. And it really helped me because I was so looking forward to being a part of the four by one release. And also all that Veronica had accomplished, listen, I was so hyped. I was so ready for the four by one release. And I have to give God thanks that I was able to play my part in helping my team to get that win. Being on that podium at the Olympics and hearing my national anthem playing, <laughs> listen to me, it was an awesome feeling. Just hearing my anthem playing and just with three other fabulous ladies. Listen, it was a moment that I will always remember my first Olympics and walking away with a gold medal in the four by one release with such a fabulous team. I have to give thanks. You see, Sharon, for me, this is what keeps me in the game because I want all athletes to experience what you experienced that moment is what we live for. I know some, some of us don't make the connection to say that when you put in that hard work and you're able to re reap that benefit, you want to enjoy the moment. And one of the things I didn't do great in my time was to enjoy the moment. I was so happy that it was over with because of the amount of stress that you face. But when you get the chance to enjoy it, I want them all to enjoy it. Mindset is what governs a champion's performance. Without a doubt, Sharon, you have the mind of a champion. In 2006, you won your first individual 200 meter gold medal at the Commonwealth Games in Melbourne, Australia. I want, to, I, I want you to, and you talk about um, Veronica Campbell. She was in that race. She was the Olympic champion too. I want you to tell me, how did you prepare your mind before entering that championship race? You know, I have to give a lot of credit to my coach and my teammates, especially Bridget Foster Hilton, because that was that was a big year for me and to be running, running, you know, when I saw the lineup and also when I made the finals and I saw, you know, all the Jamaicans, Veronica in the, in the finals, and I, I was training. I must tell you that I always work hard during my background season. I know once I'm able to put in that work, mm -hmm. it will pay off, especially when I start to compete. So that time it was pretty, it was pretty early in the season. And I can't remember, you know, I still had to be doing school work, you know, while there in Australia, I had to be studying and, you know, it, it was a lot, but I knew what I wanted. And I went there to get a medal in the 200 meters. And I can't remember, you know, Coach Stephen Francis is someone who, he is a good motivator, very good motivator. And I can remember the last thing he said to me, Sharon, go out, this is it you are ready and listen i can remember that last part of the race was coach francis saying to me just hearing him saying sure when you are ready i don't know where i got that extra energy from <laughs> but that last part of the race i saw myself just keep feeling stronger and just pushing forward and let me tell you i was so happy when i crossed the line 
and I won. And I was also happy that, you know, Jamaica got one, two, with Veronica getting second. It was very emotional. I was so happy to be able to win my first major medal. You know, it, it, <laughs> in the introduction, we showed a part of that race. And I saw you moving away the last five meters, but I'm just trying to imagine what's going on. And you said it, that you heard what your coach said, because you could tell uh, it was just a moment where you were in the zone because you wanted it. And I noticed that you have said it multiple times, know what you wanted. No, I knew what I wanted. And I'm saying that to say that a lot of times we find athletes who are struggling that say they know what they want, but they are not willing to put in the work. In 2008, Sharon, at the Beijing Olympics, you won your first individual Olympic medal in the 100 meter behind your teammate, Shelly and Fraser Price. Take us through your journey. <laughs> Looking back, tell us, what did it take mentally to achieve that milestone oh, lord it took a lot <laughs> yeah. just imagine and i think I've, I've told this story several times but it is my story and it's for me to tell your story just imagine going to a doctor just before you leave for the olympics and he's saying you need to go now and do do a surgery when he did the mri he said you need to go now to the U.S. and do a knee surgery. And I was like, no, I am not. It is too close. And this is what I train for. This is what I have written down, going to the Olympics and getting a medal. And I said to him, he knew all the pain that I was going through because there was no cartilage. It was bone rubbing against bone. I was not able to train every day. I was not able to warm up properly, even the finals. I was not able to warm up properly, but I was not thinking about that. I was thinking about getting my medal because as I said to the doctor before, if this is going to be my last Olympics, then so be it, but I'm going there to get my medal. And let me tell you something, you know, you see, I am a Christian and I know that God have my back and I prayed about it. And God knew that, listen, I'm not the best starter and God just work with me and just gave me lane two and when i saw it i said thank you jesus and i went to bed in peace and i just felt that overwhelming calm because me know said god i look out for me and i said sharon all you have to do is just start listen to me that was my best start ever me not know when me get that start from you know but that was my best start ever and let me tell you something what what would usually happen you see after 60 70 meters then it's like the knee just gave way and i say whatever is left i just had to push through and you can see me limping that last part of the race and listen to me i knew i wanted that medal and i pushed through when i saw i mean i felt like i won because all that i've been through just to get that silver medal and then when i realized three jamaicans on the podium <laughs> it, that that was just a moment that you know i have to say jesus thank you so much because he saw all that i've that I was going through all the struggles and you know what? I had to be mentally strong. Trust me, it was, the knee was close to giving, giving mm -hmm. up. But mentally I had to, to dig deeper because I knew that I could not really totally um, rely on my knee. I had to dig in more mentally because I knew what I wanted. And I really put in a lot of training. Remember 2007, I was out. Olympic year, let me tell you something, man. God have my back and I will forever sing praises because <laughs> he really was there for me. And, you know, I gave him my all and I have to give thanks that, you know, with my determination and mentally, I really you know, put everything into it, and I got that medal in 2008. Well, you see, Sharon, this is why I wanted you on the show, because people will, well, people would see you 
running, but they don't know the challenge. They don't know why you are so mentally tough. They don't know why you're out there fighting every step of the way. And the sad thing about it is that some people who don't understand what you are going through, they would be the one to first criticize what you do. So I take off my hat, even though I'm not wearing one right now. <laughs> but I tell you, that that is the mind of a champion. No, with all your hard work, all your great achievements at this time, how did you handle the level of fame and the level of success during those times? You know, when I'm from a humble beginning and I'm just always thankful for all that came my way, all that I've achieved. And I always know that there's more to achieve. So per, when whatever I've achieved, I know that there's a step more, you know, more to achieve. So that, that is why I always ensure that, you know, I keep working hard and just know that I can do more. I can achieve more. Hmm. I, I have a question because... I want other people to understand more about what it is going to take individually to be the best version of yourself. People usually see the benefits of working with an established big brand club, but they do not always see the downsides to that. Based on your experience, Sharon, what were some of the benefits that you received working with a big brand established name club? And is there any downside to that? And the reason why I asked you that question, because sometimes, as I said, people see the good part of what you do, but they don't always see the negatives to being in that situation, finding the strength to deal with all the other issues but they might even be quick to criticize not knowing the full truth as to all the things that you have to go through dealing with injuries and other other things what are some of the benefits and downsides to that so being at the mvp track club i had to ensure that i put in the work because as you said there were a lot of top athletes at the club and you have to remember that your teammates, your competitors, and also so many high achievers, you have to ensure that you're putting in the work to, in, you know, so that, you know, the coach will always be ensuring and looking out for you because you cannot be complacent. You cannot become like a daisy call. You want to ensure that you are you and you know the good thing is that as i said before i am seeing my teammates train and they're also my competitors so i want to, and we push each other we do push each other but at times you can also some may fall you know along the way and may not be you know in the too much in the coach's eye but you have to put yourself in the coach's eye and to ensure that you are putting in the work and you know it's for some they cannot work in a big group i like to be pushed i like competition so it was good for me and also you have to be mentally strong mm. you have to know what you want and to know that listen you're going to focus on you i you know i used to like doing starts with shelly and because she's the best starter so I, I was good for that because I know it would only help me if I can stay with Shelly Ann for the first 20 meters of the 30. It can only do well for me because I know that my top end is very good so that it will help me. So I am okay with training with her because she is one of the best starters, if not the best starter. So training with her will only help me. But, you know, some would not would not want that, you know, but for me, I know it will only help me and I want what will help me. So for me, it was very good. But, you know, at times as a coach, having so many top athletes to really cater to, sometimes some people, you know, he may lose interest in some athletes. 
So you have to ensure that you're you stay on top of your game and just keep pushing and just focusing, just try to focus on yourself. Mm, and that makes sense. That makes sense. Well, late in your athletic career, you did something that many people did not expect. I didn't expect it either. <laughs> you made the decision to leave MVP. What influenced you to part ways despite achieving so much with Stephen Francis? You know, you know, sometimes it's not about it's not all about success, it's not all about money, but it's just for your peace of mind and just being comfortable and just being happy. And you know, just uh, with retirement, you know, when the time comes for you to make that decision. And I do think that when I decided to leave the MVP track club, it was just for, it was my time to leave, just to, to find a new environment and just to see whatever is left in my career, whether it be good or bad, but you know i have achieved i really achieved a lot at the mvp track and club track and field club and for me at that time it was just to find a new environment mm. and that makes sense looking back at your career now what did you would say you regretted the most Dr. Greg, I re regret nothing in life, nothing at all. Everything that happens, my career in life, experience I learned from it. I regret nothing at all. Everything I've learned from it. And I do think that is just God playing a part in my career, in my life, and just teaching me ways of just knowing that, listen, you're strong, or whatever it is, you have to bounce back from it. And in everything that all the obstacles that i had to overcome in my career it was just a teaching point for me i've learned from it you know i'm a better person and i regret nothing at all i am going to ask you the question this way you have been through a lot a lot of ups a lot of downs throughout your career what would you say is the most important lesson you have learned no matter the obstacles no matter how much how many times you may fall you have to pick yourself up hold your head high and keep fighting because once you have life that is the most important thing and you just have to ensure that you have a you know a solid a solid you have some good persons behind you who will help you because when you're down, you need those persons to help you to get back up. And that really happened to me. I have some very good friends, my family, who were there for me in all my obstacles, all my down times, and I have to give thanks to them. And it's just for you to always pick yourself up and just remember that, I mean, God is always with you. And no matter what it is, he will be there to carry you through. And that is what I dwell on. That listen, he has he has brought me through the ups. So definitely he will bring me through my downs. So I always, you know, have that faith in him that guess what? No matter what it is. And every every lesson you have to learn from it. You have to learn from it. Pick yourself up and just keep fighting. Definitely. You said a lot. <laughs> Sharon, I appreciate everything that you shared with us. What would you like others to know about Sharon Simpson that they don't have already known? <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Persons, I think so much is known about me but maybe i would say just that i am someone who has a strong faith in god and i believe that he will never leave us or forsake us and just to know that when you believe in him when you trust in him definitely every you will achieve all that you want to achieve 
and I'm just someone who always keep fighting whatever comes my way. I mean, ready to punch, ready just to, to keep moving. You know, just a fighter. Mm. Well, I love everything that you represent, Sharon. I like your energy. I like your <laughs> mind. It's very rare I come in contact with the mind of a champion and, 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 and the person just exp express how they truly feel about everything in life and i see that appreciative spirit which is something that we all should have before we go is there anything else you would like to say to the world to your fans to your family to your friends is there anything you would like to say before we close with your with, with, with your author i mean i cannot say thank you enough i really have some very supportive friends family and fans and they really kept me going throughout my career and you know it, it's it's good when you know that even in your downtime you have persons who you can count on persons who you don't know them personally but they send you some very good quotes some very good good words of encouragement and that really helped help me in you know, in my down times during my career and, you know, I have to say thanks. And, you know, it's just good that you have people around you, especially your own, who are there to support you no matter what, you know, whether you win, lose, they're always there to support you. And I'm very grateful for all the support and for those who are still supporting me. <laughs> Thank you very much, Sharon, for taking the time to talk it with Dr. Greg. I love your story. I'm sure later on a lot more people will come in and watch. I personally love your mind. I love your energy. I pray that God will continue to guide and bless you, your daughter, and your family. Thank you again for coming. And may God continue to bless and keep you all safe. Thank you so much. It was such a pleasure being here. I was telling my story, sharing my experiences, and it was a really enjoyable session. Thank you so much for having me. You know, you know, Sharon, um, this is therapy. I always say that this is the only show that a person can, an ex-athlete, because we experience life different in some ways than the others. But this is one of the only show that I know that is out there where we feel free i feel good talking to you and i'm sure you feel good talking to me because as i said when you come and let's talk with dr greg it's not about me it's about you it's about your story thank you very much everyone may god continue to bless and keep you your fans your family your daughter your friends safe thank right, you the altar and be good. okay <laughs>